in this video, I want to take a look at the sum to infinity. So what we're looking at here is a special type of geometric series. So as n tends to infinity, the sum of the series will be the sum to infinity. So what we need to do here is consider two types of series. The first one being a divergent series. So to best illustrate this idea, let's just consider the first few terms here of a divergent series. So one plus four plus 16 plus 64. Obviously this will keep going on and on. So what you can see here is the terms of this series will keep getting larger and larger. So in other words, as n tends to infinity here, the sum of the first n terms will also tend to infinity. Okay, and like we said, this is a divergent series. So this is divergent. So the other type of series that you need to be familiar with is a convergent series. So a convergent series. And again, I think to best illustrate this idea, let's just consider the first few terms here. If I say I got one plus one over four, plus 1 over 16, plus 1 over 64. Obviously this will keep going on and on again. Then what we can see here is the terms of this series will keep getting smaller and smaller. So, as n tends to infinity here, what we can see then is the sum of the first n terms, in this case will tend to a finite value. Okay, the way we represent that here is we say the sum of the first n terms will tend to the sum to infinity, okay? So this is a convergent series. Now we do have a condition here on a geometric series to ensure convergence. So in this case, the common ratio R must be between minus one and one. So we say it's convergent if and only if, so the way we write that shorthand is I, F, F. So this just means if and only if. Um, so like we said, it's between minus one and one. So R is between minus one and one there. Okay, so that's very important. Do make sure you're familiar with this property here. Um, like we said, it can come up in exam style questions. So finally then, the only thing we need here is the actual formula then for the sum to infinity. So the sum to infinity here is given as a all over 1 minus r there, where obviously a is the first term in our geometric series and r is the common ratio. That's everything we need there for our introduction to the sum to infinity. But now let's take a look at some exam style questions. So we start off with question one here. We've got a nice question to get us started. So we've got a geometric series which has first term 24 and common ratio of a third. So a is equal to 24 and r is equal to a third. We're asked to find the sum to infinity of the series. So remember, the sum to infinity is given as a over one minus r. And obviously we can find the sum to infinity in this case because r is between minus one and one. So we just need to substitute a and r into this expression here to obtain the sum to infinity. So in this case, it's gonna be 24 all over one minus a third. So one minus a third. In that case, we get 24 over two thirds. In that case, then just put this into your calculator here. If you've got 24 divided by two thirds, what you get then in this case is 36. Okay, and there we have it. So as easy as that, that's the sum to infinity for that series, giving us a solution to question one. So we move on to question two now. We've got the third term of a geometric series, which is given as 30. The seventh term of the same geometric series is 1.875. So for part A, we have to find the common ratio R for the geometric series. So to answer part A here, we just need to use the formula for the nth term. Remember the nth term of a geometric series is given as AR to the n minus one. So if we've got the third term, that's gonna be U3, that's gonna be equal to AR to the three minus one, so that's AR squared. We know that the third term here is 30, so AR squared is equal to 30. And then for the seventh term here, U7, that's gonna be AR to the seven minus one, so that's AR 
to the 6 there. And we know that that's equal to 1.875. Okay. So what I need to do now is just solve these simultaneous equations here. If I call this equation 1, I call this equation 2. All I'm going to do then is take equation 2 here and divide that by equation 1. So I've got AR to the 6 over AR squared all over AR squared. And that's going to be equal to 1.875 divided by 30. 1.875 divided by 30. So we just deal with the left hand side to begin with. Obviously these A's will cancel. I've then got R to the 6 over R squared. So that's going to give me R to the power of 4. On the right hand side here then obviously just put this into your calculator and what you should get then is 0 0.0625 and then clearly if I just want the value of r here I need to take the fourth root of both sides okay so on the left hand side we just get r and on the right hand side taking the fourth root here of 0 0.0625 0 0.0625 again just put this into your calculator and what you should find then for r is we get a half Okay, so r is equal to a half. So that's part A done, hopefully nice and straightforward. For part B then, we do that over here. We have to find the first term in the geometric series. So there's two ways of doing this. Obviously, if we know the third term here is 30, I can just work backwards. Um, obviously, I'd just double this. So my next term, the second term would be 60. And the first term would obviously be doubling 60, which would be 120. But a better way of doing that is to just think about these two equations here. So AR squared is equal to 30. So AR squared is equal to 30. If we know that R is equal to a half here, in that case I get A multiplied by a half to the power of 2, so a half squared, and that's equal to 30. In other words, I get A times 1 over 4, so I get A over 4 is equal to 30. And just multiply both sides here by 4 to give a equals 30 times 4, giving us the 120. Okay, so like I said, two ways of doing that. That's a slightly neater way of doing it. Um, but obviously, just working backwards would be fine as well. Okay, so that's the first term in the geometric series. And then finally, for part C here, we're to find the sum to infinity for the geometric series. So we're going to need to clear a bit of room here. We'll just clear a bit of room. So let's just note then the first term. So a here is equal to 120, and the common ratio r was a half. Okay, so let's just recall the formula then for the sum to infinity. That's given as a over 1 minus r. Now obviously all we need to do then is just substitute a and r into this expression here. We're going to get 120, 120 over 1 minus r, so that's 1 minus a half. What I'm going to get then is 120 divided by a half here. Obviously, 1 minus a half would give me a half. And if you divide by a half, it's the same as times in by 2. So this is equal to 120 times 2, which would give us 240 there. Okay. And there we have it. So the sum to infinity, this geometric series, is equal to 240. And there we have it. So that's the solution to question 2. And finally, we take a look at the very last question here. We've got the geometric series, which has the terms 2 plus 8x plus 32x squared plus 128x cubed. And we're given that the series is convergent. So for part A, we have to state the condition required for a geometric series to be convergent. So remember, a geometric series is convergent if and only if, I'm just going to write this down here. Remember, using IFF to represent if and only if, r is between minus 1 and 1 there, okay? And that's all we simply need there for part A, hopefully nice and straightforward. So for part B now it says hence or otherwise find the range of possible values of x. So what we need to do to begin with is find the common ratio for this geometric series. So to get from 2 to 8x I multiply by 4x. To get from 8x to 32x squared again we just multiply by 4x, and then finally, to get from 32x squared to 128x cubed, just multiply by 4x. So what that shows us then is the common ratio here, r, is equal to 4x. So, if I use this condition here, that r must be between minus 1 and 1, 
but we know that r is equal to 4x, we can then find the range of possible values of x. So we can see then that 4x here must be between minus 1 and 1. But remember, we want the range of possible values of x, so what I need to do here is divide through by the coefficient of x here, so there's 4, I'm going to get minus a quarter, and positive a quarter there. Okay. And there we have it, so that's all we simply need for part B. And then finally to finish with here, for part C, it says find an expression for the sum to infinity in terms of x. So let's just recall the formula for the sum to infinity. That's given as a over 1 minus r. Obviously a is the first term, which we can see here is 2. So a is equal to 2. And r, we established in part B, that's 4x. Okay. So in that case then, we can find an expression for the sum to infinity in terms of x. So the sum to infinity here is going to be given as a, which is 2, all over 1 minus r, so 1 minus 4x there. Okay, and there we have it, so that's our solution to question 3, and that brings the end of this video on the sum to infinity. In the next video, we're going to take a look at sigma notation.